G'day. Here's a piece of the standard algebra curriculum that I really struggle with. I, actually, I, I have a terrible attitude about this particular piece of content. It's about factoring quadratic expressions. I guess people call them trinomials, because why not use hard, confusing words for an expression like this? Something with x squared, something with x's, and something with numbers. There's a quadratic expression. And students in the algebra class are expected to be able to see or quickly derive that this is really uh, x plus 2 times x plus 3 in disguise. They're meant to factor it. Why? Well, the only reason I can see is so that you can actually answer questions about factoring that are designed to factor nicely quickly on a test. And so that you can also uh, quickly see where the zeros are a very nice quadratic expression that you have to be graphing on a test. I don't have any practical uh, use for this. I think it's a terrible piece of the curriculum. But here it is. It can be used as a lovely way to exercise common sense and helping kids feel empowered to actually see through the clutter and find structure. Maybe that's good, maybe that's good, and treat this like logic games, logic puzzles. That's fine, right? nothing against logic puzzles. For practical use, people think this is important. It only works for the questions which are designed to work, which to me makes them kind of unnecessary. However, however, let's do it. How do you factor quadratic expressions? All right, so if you really must do this, um, first of all, let me check if what I just wrote is correct. And the way to do that is let me check this answer here and see if it really is that particular expression, x squared plus 5x plus 6. And to me, this is a multiplication problem, and I'm going to think the area model. Got to love the area model. So I'm really asking you to check, is x plus 2 times x plus 3 going to give me this particular value there? And yes, if I draw this picture here, I've got a square of side length x, height x, there's an x squared, x times x. The area of this piece is 2 wide, two, uh, x high, that's 2x. X, uh, x wide, 3 high for this piece, that's 3x and 2 wide and 3 high is 6. And yes, I can see I've got x squared, I've got 5x, and I've got 6. The area model is lovely um, because it actually lines up all the powers of x beautifully as well, and I'm going to see, yes, x plus 2 times x plus 3 is actually x squared plus 5x plus 6. But here's the fun part. Suppose I didn't know that. All I've got is this answer, and I'm meant to find the factors. So how would I do that? Well, I would do the following. Here's what I would do. So I know I'm going to come from an area model, I go and I want an x squared piece, I want a 5x, and I want a 6. So let's draw that up and see what these pieces have to be. Well, the only piece that gives me x squared is this cell right here, so this better be x squared right there. All right. Now, now, here's another reason I don't like these problems, because now I have to play let's guess what the author was thinking game. Because I need two pieces that multiply together to give me x squared. And yes, it does seem like x and x seem like the obvious choices. But not the only choices. I could do 2x and half x. I could do 3x and a third x. I could do crazy things here. So I'm going to play the game that the authors probably designed this question to be particularly nice and easy, and I'll go with the easiest thing first. Let's go with x times x to give me the x squared piece. But then I don't know what these other ones are. I do know that needs to be a 6, and that's about it. And these two pieces have to combine to be 5x. But here's what I'm going to do. Here's what I'm going to do. I don't know what the pieces are, I'll give them names. I'll call this x plus p and x plus q. So this piece will be p times x, this piece will be q times x, and this piece will be p times q. So right now, okay, give myself a bit more space, I can see that p and q have to be numbers with a certain property. Namely, px's plus qx's have to have to 5x's. So I can see right now that p plus q better be 5. And I also see that p times q has to be that 6. P times Q has to be 6. So now it's just a puzzle. I have to stare at that and say, can I think of two numbers that multiply by together to make 6 whose individual numbers add to 5? When I think about this for a while, I think about this, and I think, oh, 2 and 3. You can think 2 and 3. So let's go with P being uh, 2 and Q being 3. All right, in which case, let's check ourselves. If P is 2 and Q is 3, what would I get? What would I get? Uh, 2 and 3, in fact, I think it's exactly what I had earlier on. Uh, 2x, 3x, yes, and 6, and it works out. Bingo, that works. It is x plus 2 does x plus 3. But of course, I could have also done p equals 3, q equals 2. Hmm, maybe there's a different answer. What would that do to my, to my situation here? Well, let's check it out. Uh, if this is with a 3 instead, that's the p, and the q was a 2, I get 3x here, I get uh, 2x here, and I'd get 6 again. It still works out. I'd probably be writing my answer as x plus 3 times x plus 2 in that case. All right, same, same, same deal, good and gold. So that's the method of factoring quadratic expressions via this area method. 
I love the idea of just choosing two numbers, P and Q, and using your common sense to try to figure out what happens to work. Because in the school world, everything works out nicely, because they're designed to work out nicely, so you can do them on a test with speed. Mm. Okay, but let's do a couple more examples. So let me clean the board and do some more factoring, because why not? Okay, let's practice factoring trinomials with these three examples. Kindly factor each of these. All right, the first one, x squared plus x minus 12. All right, so let me draw the area model. Uh, I'm going to have an x squared piece. All right, I'm going to assume the author's being nice to me, and that comes from x times x. But I'm definitely going to have an x squared piece, got that. The rest of it needs a single x, a single x, and I need a negative 12. Okay, so I need to get some numbers that work for that particular picture. Uh, let me just write in general numbers P and Q. So now I see this piece will have to be PX. Whoops, PX. Let me just write this correctly. Do, 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 do. PX. This piece will have to be Q times X, and this will have to be P times Q. So what's it saying? PX's plus QX's makes 1X. So I better have that P plus Q equals 1. Let me do that in pink. P plus Q has to be 1. And P times Q has to be negative 12. P times Q has to be negative 12. Okay, so now I stare at that and think of two, two numbers that multiply to negative 12 that add up to 1, and I am thinking P is 4 and Q is negative 3. All right, okay, let's check that out. P is 4, Q is negative 3. Okay, P at the top is 4. Let's write that in. 4 and negative 3 for Q. Okay, I will get 4X right there. I will get negative 3X right there, and I'll get negative 12 right there. And yes, it's all hanging together beautifully. We did it. This factors as uh, x plus 4 times x minus 3. There it is, x plus 4 times x minus 3. All right, OK. All right, kind of fun, just using common sense and just treating it like a little logic puzzle for the sake of having a logic puzzle. Let's do the next one, x squared minus 25. OK, OK, this is a famous example. This is called a difference of two squares. I've got square number minus a square number. So let's play with it. Okay, so I'm going to set this up. There's an x squared piece. I'm going to guess that it comes from x times x, because the author's probably nice to me. And I'll need some numbers p and q. There'll be a px, there'll be a qx, and there'll be a pq. I need an x squared piece. Got it. I need, oh, zero x's. No x's whatsoever. And I need a negative 25. Negative 25. All right, so what's that telling me? That's telling me that px's and qx's add up to zero x's. So I need p plus q to add up to zero. And I need p times q to be negative 25. p times q to be negative 25. OK. So basically, uh, p and q are the same number, but they're opposite signs. p is the opposite of q. So I'm thinking 5 and negative 5. 5 times negative 5 is negative 25. 5 and negative 5 add up to zero. All right, I'm going to say p is 5 and q is negative 5. Well, maybe it's the other way around, um, but what if it gives me a different answer or not? You should check it out. But let's do it. We, just, we were just told to factor it one time. I'll just do it one time. Let's do 5 and negative 5. Okay, here goes. 5 and negative 5. Does it work out? 5 and negative 5. Here goes. 5x's, uh, negative 5x's, and negative 25. x squared, 0x's, negative 25. Great. This is x plus 5 times x minus 5. There it is. There it is. Grand and good. And in general, you can prove, even draw a picture like this to prove that x squared minus a squared is x plus a times x minus a. And many students are asked to memorize that formula because there's going to be lots of questions on the test that utilize that formula. Okay. Ah, but this third one, third one, that's more exciting. That's got a little, little bit of a twist to it. I'm excited now. It's going to test my logical common sense metal right now. Here goes. 2x squared plus 7x minus 15. Let's factor that quadratic expression because why not? 2x squared. All right, all right. Um, I bet I could make this work. Root 2x times root 2x. They would multiply together to give me 2x squareds. But I'm guessing the author is probably not going to make me do that in an algebra class. They say, no, no, that's too hard for kiddos. We won't, won't do that. So the author probably wants me to do something different. So I'll do something different. But I'm going to invite you to push this through nonetheless. Um, but here goes. I'll do what I'm going to guess the author wants me to do. I'm going to guess the author wants me to keep it simple, do something like 2x times x. 2x times x is 2x squared. All right, but I need other numbers, p and q, so let's fill this out. p times x, uh, or watch out, 2x times q, that's 2qx, that's a little bit different there, and p times q. 
And we want, we want 2x squared, got that. We want 7x's, 7x's, and we want negative 15. All right, so there's the setup. So what do these magic numbers P and Q have to do? Well, PX's and 2QX's have to add up to 7X's. So I need a P and 2Q to add up to 7. And I need P times Q to be negative 15. P times Q equals negative 15. And now this is just a moment I have to like sit here and stare at this and kind of think, can I think of two numbers that multiply to negative 15 and satisfy that equation? And my brain is thinking 5 and negative 3. Let's make Q5 and P negative 3. Does that do it? So let's see. If P is negative 3 and Q is 5, P times Q is negative 15, our two Qs is 10, and P is negative 3 is 7. I lucked out. My brain just went to that for some reason. That was pretty quick. I'm usually very slow at these things because I actually don't care about these things. That's my, that's my trouble. I have a bad attitude. I, I remember saying that, I think. All right, so let's try it. Let's try P is negative 3 and Q is 5. And whoops, I didn't should erase that. So that'll be X. I said P was negative 3 and Q was 5. Let's see if this works out. Uh, negative 3 times X, negative 3X. 2X times 5 is 10X, and negative 3 times negative 5 is negative 15. 2X squareds, 7Xs, and negative 15. That's great, we got it. So this is 2X minus 3, 2X minus 3 times X plus 5. Great, great, great. So that's it. That's the, that's the lovely little game of just playing with the area model to factorize these, uh, these quadratic expressions, these trinomials. And it's kind of cute. I actually do have fun with this. I will admit I do have fun with this. But I'm only treating it as a puzzle for the sake of a puzzle. Mathematically, I don't know what we're doing. I suppose we're seeing structure and algebraic expressions. I suppose that's a good thing. Hmm. Anyhow, if you have to do it, here's a nice way to do it. Play with the area model. And it's actually then kind of fun.